We are live. Welcome to Fly Tying Monday. This is your host, Tom Rosenbauer, and I'm here with Julia today. Julia is still here with us. She hasn't had her baby yet, and she's hoping, she just said she's hoping she has a few more of these in her before she uh, takes her maternity leave. So um, I know that I know that you guys like having Julia here. So anyway, she's here and she'll be reading off your questions if you have any. It's a pretty simple fly today. So uh, not sure. I'm not sure if you have too many questions, but um, we'll talk here for a few minutes until I see that uh, that we've got a quorum. I see there's a few of you. Um, I don't see any comments yet. So if you're new, there's some comments, Ryan and William and Bill. Um, you know, if you're new here, welcome. We do this, try to do this every Monday. We don't, don't, don't hit every Monday because, uh, I'm not always here. Uh, but, um, we tie flies on Monday and you tie along if you want. Or you can watch it on the replay. You can watch it on the replay on YouTube. Um, if you miss something, you want to go back, you, uh, they're all in YouTube under Tying with Tom on the Orvis, on the Orvis YouTube channel. So you can do that if you want. But I see we got lots of people coming in from the Netherlands and Ontario and... Colorado Springs and Springfield, Missouri and Alberta, Canada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all over the place. North Carolina, Tennessee. Anyway, um, the pattern's up there. So if you want to know what the pattern is, what the materials are, it's listed in the comments. Just read the comments. And... Uh, I'm going to start to tie in a little bit. And if you have questions, Julia will read them off to me because I can't look at the screen when I'm tying. Roger is sitting at the vice. Oh, but Ro Roger is tying the pheasant tails we tied last week. Well, that's good, Roger. Um, we're going to tie something a little bit bigger this week than those little pheasant tails. So anyway... What we're going to tie today is Dave Skoke's mush mouth. And it's a it's an older saltwater pea. I mean, not that old, but it's um, probably at least 15 or 20 years old. And it, it's a good pattern. Um, it's, a, it's a bait fish imitation. So it's it, although it was designed as a saltwater fly, mainly as a fly for stripers and bluefish, because um, that's, that's uh, what Dave what Dave uh, fishes for primarily. It's a bait fish imitation. So this will catch um, nearly nearly anything that'll eat another fish. Uh, good, it'll be a good bass fly, be a good pike fly. Um, probably wouldn't be a good carp fly because it's too big, but uh, be a good trout fly. You could, you could definitely catch trout on this fly. It's a little big for most trout, but um, you know, big brown trout would definitely eat this fly. So, but it's but it's designed as a saltwater fly where you have a lot of wind and you might be making longer casts. Um, although it's big, you can make them really big. Um, it's relatively light. It sheds water quickly and doesn't have a lot of weight to it. So it's a lot easier to make a long cast on this fly. And um, the real secret to this fly is a semi-flexible spine that you tie in and you kind of attach uh, some of the materials to that spine and it keeps the tail from wrapping under the hook, hook bend because uh, you know, if you have a long fly and the, and the materials wrap around the hook bend, the fly won't swim properly in the water and fish almost never take a fly that's fouled. So um, it's important in saltwater flies where you got a lot of wind, sometimes crosswind, you're making long casts and the chances of having a fly foul unless you uh, have some kind of foul guard are, are great. So anyway, that's, and uh, you may hear a puppy whining downstairs. He's in his kennel and I'm home alone again. And 
he's not happy being in his kennel. He's lonely. So um, sorry about the, the puppy. He'll, he'll probably settle down after a couple minutes. Anyway, all right. So if there's no questions about this, I don't see any questions. Uh, why don't we get started on this fly? So the first thing I'm going to do, there's some of the materials. First thing I'm going to do is, that's a, a, about a three-quarter finished one. I'm going to take that out of the vise. And I'm going to start with a hook. And uh, the hook I like for these is some short shank, uh, some sort of short shank hook. You typically, um, tarpon, tarpon hooks are relatively short shank. Um, and you can, you can make, you can use a big hook on this fly. Um, you know, this is a two O hook, but this'll, this'll definitely hook up, you know, 18 inch striped bass. So it's not too big of a hook. And since it's a bigger fly, bigger hook balances it out better. So I'm going to grab one of these. This is a Gamakatsu SC 17, but there's lots of other, uh, short shank saltwater hooks you could use on this. And I'm going to put it in the vise. Got my heavy duty jaws in my Renzetti vise today. And for this fly, um, Dave likes to use monofilament thread, mainly because um, you're gonna you're gonna have a gonna have an epoxy head in the finished fly and um, the monofilament, uh, you know, kind of disappears when you put epoxy over it. So we're going to tie this with monofilament thread. I'm using uh, 0 0.006 and you could use heavier if you wanted to. Uh, doesn't matter because uh, bulk isn't going to matter on this fly. And if you don't have monofilament thread um, like that, you can use just white, just white, probably 3.0 uh, or 140 denier thread. And we're going to start the start the monofilament. Monofilament's a little slipperier, so sometimes it's a little harder to work with. And I'm just going to wind over itself, trim this, and wind back to where the hook starts to bend down. You want to stop right about there. Maybe go just a little farther, right about there. Okay. And next we're going to tie in our spine. And the spine is made from, it. you want for the spine on this thing, you want a, a stiffer, nylon uh this is called this one is called unique hair but you can use ultra hair um you just want you just want some sort of relatively stiff nylon hair for this and this is probably this is probably the right amount so there's how much there is in relation to my finger um and you're going to go over to your hook and measure it. And you want it to go. I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to lay that on top of there for a minute and then move my camera. You want it to go back kind of as far as, as far as you want, as, you know, as long as you want to make the fly, but you want to, this is a, you know, this is a fly that's going to be a few inches long. So you can make them longer, you can make them shorter, depending on the size of the bait fish you're trying to imitate. But I would go, you know, let me measure it. Let me get a tape measure here and tell you about how long I would make this. So I would go back about eh, three inches from the... Uh, from the back. So I'm going to extend this about three inches back. 
and then I'm going to uh, allow a little tie down. And so I'll cut it right here. And then you want to take this stuff and taper it a little bit with your fingers by just kind of just kind of pulling out the center of these and twisting them a little bit just so it has a has a taper on the end just kind of hold it loosely and and let those things kind of slide out of there and if some of them are super long you can pull them out but you just want a little bit of taper to that you can also you can also use your scissors afterwards to taper it but I've got a you know a little bit of a little bit of a taper there on the end and then I am going to tie this in tightly. You can put quite a bit of pressure on this monofilament. And I'm going to go up about three quarters of the, the shank. Make sure it doesn't pull out. So I'm going to go about here. And then I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to cover up those ends of that material and then you want to come back and you want to wind underneath the hair about three or four times and pull pull up against it like so so that it cocks up just a bit that's that's gonna again it's gonna help it it's gonna help it uh it's gonna help prevent fouling because all this all the other hair is going to be stuck to this spine to about here. And it'll just, it'll just help, help a bit from having this or the wing wrap. That's called fouled right there. And that will really ruin the action of a fly. I got that in place. Then I'm going to take the flashy material of choice and I'm going to use pearl flashaboo here, standard pearl flashaboo, and cut myself, I don't know, maybe 10 strands of it. Maybe more. Yeah, about that. And I'm going to wet it, makes it a little easier to work with. And then I'm going to fold, fold this flashaboo around my thread, even it out a little bit, and if I can get in there, I'm going to come down on top and secure that, and then I'm going to try to coax half those to one side and half to the other. You may want to may want to turn your vise to make sure you got it going down the center center line. Not that critical. Not that critical because it's going to all be buried inside some other hair. So I'm going to come back to there, and then I'm just going to trim that flash even with the end of my spine. So I'll just pull this out and at the end of the spine, I'll just cut that flash off like so. And come back to here. Now, you do want to prepare your wing materials in advance of the next step. So um, this fly can be tied with any contrasting uh, colors of stuff you want. I'm going to use kind of a kind of a greenish white, greenish grayish white for the belly, and the back is going to be 
kind of an olivey chartreuse. And for this material, you want something that's soft with a little bit of flash in it. And the material I like to use is uh, sculpting flash fiber. Um, but you can, you can use uh, angel hair, sparkle hair, anything that you got a combination of, of synthetic fiber with a little flash in it. And this is, a, this is a material, you want this to be soft and flowing, unlike the tail. So first I'm gonna get my belly and I'm gonna take, I don't know, pencil, pencil width diameter of hair. And then I'm going to bring it over to my vise. And I'm going to measure it. I want this, I want the, I want it to go just beyond that spine. And you can't see it there, but it's, it's going just be, trust me, it's going just beyond the spine. And then you want about a third more forward. Let me just move this camera a little bit so you can see where I'm going here. So you want about a third more forward of that because you're gonna you're gonna fold this over and that's gonna be the back. So I'm going to um, measure that here. And cut it there. Can use the excess for a smaller fly. And then you want to kind of taper, taper this bunch. So just kind of roll it in your fingers and twist it so that you get a little bit of a taper at both ends. So now you can see there's kind of a taper at that end and there's a taper at that end. So I'm going to put that aside and then I'm going to take my green, an equal amount of green, possibly a little more. For the green part or brown or gray or whatever you want the back of this bait fish to um, whatever whatever color you want the back of your bait fish to be and then I'm going to cut that the same length as my other one maybe Tom, just a tad. Tom we have a question from Edward yes Edward. Uh, Edward, hope you're feeling better. He's, I think he said he's recovering from COVID. But oh, he um, sorry to hear that. is asking that, you know, he said you normally tie the original recipes, but in this case, would you perhaps use a little bit less flashaboo? Mm, no, I, I found because the flashaboo on this one is pearl and mm. it's a little more subtle. Um, you can use as much as you or as little as you want. Um, but I found that when, when I tie these, the flash doesn't show through as much. So I've added a little more than I normally would. Ed probably knows that, um, that I don't like a lot of flash in my flies. <laughs> but on th this one, I add a little bit more. Okay, great. Hope you feel better soon, Edward. Yeah, I hope you feel better, Ed. Uh, any other questions? No, so we've far? got we've got my cat Jocko watching intently too. You, okay, we have who? <laughs> my cat Jocko. Oh, mm -hmm. and March Brown Eyed Dunn. Oh, hi. Hi, little D. Snow day in Texas. Wow, we've oh, got a snow wow. day here too. And Exciting. now I'm gonna I'm gonna taper I'm gonna taper this um, this other part. I always find this difficult, but. Um, just kind of roll it and pull it a little bit so you get a taper on there. And you could trim this afterwards too, so it's not a big deal. And so then we're going to take the belly part. Oh, first you're going to wind your thread forward uh, in front of that, that bump there. Okay, and we, got a, we got a few more questions that just came in. Okay. Um, Ted's asking if you can make this weedless. I'm not sure if he's asking about a weed guard or, but. Well, you can, you can make any fly weedless if you want. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Noble's asking if this will work in the winter. 
This will work wherever fish eat other fish. Perfect. And then uh, Bill's asking if EP fibers will work. Yeah, they yeah, there's a yeah, they don't have a flash, but you could use EP fibers for it. Great. Yep. All right. Greetings all. Thank you. That's it for now. Okay. And I'm I'm gonna actually I'm gonna cover just to get a little base, give myself a little base for that for that way. So I'm gonna take the belly. This is the belly, and I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer than that tail, which you can't see here because the fly's too big, and if I got it any wider, I'd have to have the camera like three feet from the fly, and then I couldn't tie and run the camera at the same time. And I'm just going to attach that to the bottom of the hook. It's about four or five turns. And then you want to distribute this. You want to kind of grab it and distribute it around the bend. So you're going to pull pull some of it out and try to distribute it about 50 50 let's see what i got there yeah i need to come take some more of these just so it just so it goes around the bend so just distribute it around the bend like so so it's kind of about 180 degrees around the uh, around the shank okay and keep this part on the bottom pull it a little bit and then you're going to take your green and do the same thing on top so i'm going to make this a little bit longer than the belly I'll let it come back a little bit further than the belly. And I'm going to just tie that big bunch right on top of there. Oh, I forgot something. Oh, my God. I forgot something. I forgot the most important step. I could still get away with it with this part. I'm going to get this out of the way. I made a big mistake. Actually, I'm going to take it off. I made a big mistake. This is why you prepare your um, stuff beforehand because I'm going to take some sort of flexible glue that does not dry quickly. So that would be this stuff, Softex, or it would be Flex Cement or um, some, other, some other cement that's flexible but doesn't doesn't dry right away because uh, you don't want you do not want to use UV epoxy here. That's not going to work. Um, so uh, Softex is is the stuff that I use. Um, Liquid Fusion is another brand of adhesive um, that you want to use for this particular fly. A uh, couple questions. One yeah. isn't particularly uh, specific to this tie FY, but Keith's asking, he just said, you know, you can tell that you are a commercial tire. He's curious how many years you've tied and just that he really enjoys your tying videos. Uh, and then Peter's asking, what's that material? So I'm guessing he's talking about the Flashaboo, but I'm not sure. That's Flashaboo. Flashaboo yeah. over, over uh, ultra hair or a unique hair, a stiffer thing. And I have been tying, let's see, about <laughs> about 55 years. The time flies That's about amazing. 55 years. And I, I was, when I was a teenager, I was a commercial fly tire. Um, not anymore, though. <laughs> so right. I'm going to... Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to take this liquid fusion, and I'm or this soft text, and I'm going to goop this up pretty good. And I'm going to come back to about here beyond the bend of the hook. And I'm going to really goop that up. You could wind it over your thread winds there too. But I'm going to give it a good coat of this stuff. And especially underneath at this point. 
And so the wing fiber is going to stick to this part, going to give you a little spine, and going to keep it from fouling. Okay. So again, you don't want something quick drying. Gotta you change. Want... You gotta change cameras, Tom. Oh God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That was also right, my I'll fault. I should have caught it earlier. I'll do that again. <laughs> sorry. So I've got it pretty gooped up. I'll goop it up some more. Put it over the wines. Put it all over there. Lots and lots of goop. Don't be, don't be shy about that. Okay. So now I'm going to tie in my belly strip. One, two, three, and then I'm going to, probably easier if I rotate the vise, and you can even come in with your dubbing needle as long as it's not got too much goop on it. And you're going to stroke that back. And you're going to stroke that back and, and squeeze it in here so that it kind of adheres to that, to that spine that you made. Straighten this out. And then just let it hang there for a minute. Now I'm going to, I'm going to put some more goop on there. Soft text whatever flexible cement you can find. Back to about the same point that you did the other stuff. And then put the top portion on, which is easier because you don't have to get it around that hook bend. And a little bit longer than the bottom one. Tie this in on top and then stroke that back so that it sticks to that cement. You can even comb it at this point a little bit if you want. So there, there is your and we'll show you show you what it looks like all the way back. So there's what my fly looks like so far. And then you want to gather the top and the bottom together. And pull that around the bottom around the around the hook shank make sure you get it all stroke back there make sure everything's straight and then wind a little bit in front build up a little head in front of these guys and then come back, not too far, but just on top. Sometimes it's difficult to just grab that end. There we go. Grab that end to tie it down. Tom, uh, Keith's asking if you ever use Velcro to tease out the material. Yeah, you can use Velcro. Velcro works good. Great. You can Velcro use it to, or you want a back a... comb for your hair too. Yeah. <laughs> comb. There's a little uh, brush that works quite well that that they sell. Now you can trim it now or you can trim it later. 
I think I'll trim it later. Cause you wanna, you wanna kind of, you know, take a pair of long scissors, like three or four inch, very sharp three or four inch scissors. And um, it's really, if you're gonna tie saltwater flies, you need a pair of long, uh, really sharp serrated blade scissors. Uh, these came from Enrico Puglisi. They're hard to find. Uh, not all fly shops have them, uh, but you know they're they're uh, hair cutting scissors, really good quality hair cutting scissors, and they're not cheap. But if you're going to do um, enough of these enough of these saltwater flies, you're going to want uh, you're going to want a pair of long bladed scissors that are very sharp. And I'm going to. Tom, uh, Deegan's asking if you brush the glue back through the fibers all the way kind of like to the tail. Or no, not just, to the, just, not just all the way to the tail, okay. just to right about yeah, here. Inch. Okay. Yep. Great. Now we're going to whip finish. But all we got to do is put the eyes on here and do the epoxy. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do two whip finishes because this stuff uh, is kind of springy. Not that it's, it's going to be covered with epoxy, so don't need to worry about it. And you want to take a couple of the eyes of your choice. I like these uh, living eyes in the ice color. Here's what they look like. The 3D eyes, they're pretty cool looking. They look pretty, they look pretty good. They look pretty lifelike. And um, take some super glue first and put some super glue on one side, right up into the wing. And then on the other side, right up into the wing. Tom, Ed's asking if you ever use fishtail masks for flies like this. Uh, no, I, I think they're too heavy. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't really care for those those uh, fishtail. Okay. Those masks. But you know, a lot of people use them. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to stick an eye on one side, kind of back against the wing. Oops, that always happens to me. Couple more questions, Tom. Okay. He's Oops. asking if you uh, prefer <laughs> the runny super glue over gel super glue. I use the standard uh, Zappa Gap variety. Mm -hmm. And then Keith asking, uh, another Keith is asking if those are synthetic living eyes that you're using. Uh, <laughs> Let's see what they're called. Yeah, he said he couldn't read the package either. Oh. Orvis sells them. Mm -hmm. I'll put a little link in the chat. They're called uh, living eyes. <clears throat> Maybe synthetic. Yeah, probably synthetic living eyes on the website. And then you want to let this sit for a minute just to make sure that those eyes are on there. And then you're going to take your UV epoxy. I know everybody's excited because they actually get to use that epoxy that they're always asking me about. And you really need to do, you really need to do two applications with the epoxy. The first thing you want to do is come in and fill the gaps between the eyes. So you want to kind of get it all over the place, but you want to make sure that you fill that gap between those two eyes. And you can let this come up on the wing a little bit if you want. And you're going to, you know, give it a good first coat. And 
make sure you get some everywhere like so and hit it with your spin it a little bit loosen your vice maybe spin it i got my uv light in here Get, it, get that light nice and close. Make sure your batteries are fresh. Weak batteries will uh, make this stuff not cure so well. That's cured. And now you put a final coat on top of that. And you can, you can actually cover the eyes if you want to. Sometimes I put these eyes a little further forward and then I cover them completely. Give it a nice good coat of epoxy. Yeah, I will go over the eyes and cover them up. And I like the... Um, kind of the standard viscosity, not really thin and not really thick uh, epoxy for this, you know, the classic or the regular or whatever the brand you have. And then you're going to hit that with your light as you rotate it. Tom, Roger Bird has an interesting question. Yeah. He's asking, uh, do tying lamps affect the effectiveness of a UV lamp? I don't think there's much UV in a tying lamp, so yeah. no, I don't. It doesn't seem to. Sunlight will. If you got mm -hmm. direct sunlight on your tying area, you know your epoxy might cure right away. But most okay. people aren't aren't tying in direct sunlight. Great. Uh, and then Keith's asking, <laughs> what would that fly sell for in a fly shop? Great tie, Tom. Um, I don't know. <laughs> It's probably been a while uh, since you've bought flies. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably three or four bucks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't, I don't buy flies because I, I use all my own flies. So um, I don't buy flies, but probably three or four bucks last time I checked. Okay. So that eye is nice and nice and dry. Sometimes some of these epoxies get a little tacky. And um, one of the tricks to do is to put them in the sunlight for a couple days, just on a windowsill or something. That will um, that will keep it from getting tacky. Or you could put a, a coat of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails or Clear Head Cement over that because it sometimes is a little sticky. Um, and the final step on this fly, which I'll I'll bring over to the bigger camera so you can see the the whole thing is to trim it. You don't always need to trim these. Oh, comb it first. You gotta comb it. Gotta comb it out. So that those, you know, those fibers aren't, aren't trapped or anything. And then for the back, I like these long scissors. And you just kind of want to taper, taper it a little bit. Tom, we have a, um, a good question, and I, I'm not sure if you covered this at the beginning. Uh, Rube Dogs is, aski is asking, do you fish these patterns on a floating or a sink tip line? And do, would you ever use them on a freshwater fish like bass? The, yes to all of the above. I would <laughs> fish them on a sinking line if I wanted to go deep. I would fish them on a floating line on the flats or in shallow water. And yes, I would absolutely use this for bass, trout, pike, uh, you know, anything, literally anything that will eat another fish will take this fly. So if the fish you're chasing, walleye. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, <laughs> if the fish that you are chasing will eat a bait fish, another fish, then this fly will work. That's the thing about bait fish flies. They're so they're so useful that you can use them anywhere. 
And it's really tough for this belly to get in here uh, too well with the long scissors because you've got that bend there. So I'll often maybe come in and use my my smaller scissors to kind of trim that trim that belly to get a little bit better taper on it. It's just easier with the small scissors. And if you like the way you, I mean, you could keep trimming this thing forever. And that's the, that's the, the danger of, of starting to trim flies. Cause you, you get a little, sometimes you get a little over aggressive and then you take too much off, but trim it to the shape you want. And you know, if I wanted a, a slimmer bait fish than this, this will slim down in the water a bit. If I wanted a slimmer bait fish than this, I would uh, use less material. And if I wanted a big, deep, wide one to, it, to uh, imitate a shad or something, then I'd use more material. So you can you can get the get the shape you want uh, just by just by the amount of material that you use. So that is, and again, this part here is relatively stiff. It's flexible enough so that the fly will have good action, but it's stiff enough so that that material is not going to flop around the bend of the hook. And of course, now that I look at it, I want to trim it some more. Oh boy, that dog is not happy. He wants to tie flies with us. There. All right, I'm done. I got to stop. I got to stop. There's the fly. There it is. Let me get a little closer here. So there it is. The mushmouth. Easy fly. Again, easy fly. Um, Nothing, nothing too, uh, nothing too difficult in this fly. Take your time, and um, you know it's more more working with glue than than it is tying. So, um, anyway, that's it. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, Marsh Brown I done says you can even catch crappie and yellow perch with this fly if you tie it small enough. Yeah, you tie it in a size six or size eight, which which you could do very easily. Um, you could catch panfish with it. So yeah. And you could tie it, you could tie it five or six inches long for pike. So um, would you ever add a stinger? No, Keith, I never add stinger hooks to my flies. If a fish is gonna eat a bait fish. They come from behind and they gulp it in. They suck it in. And, um, you know, if a fish is going to nip at the tail of this fly, it's not big enough and I don't want it. Uh, I, don't like, I don't like two hooks. Uh, it would ruin the action of this fly. Uh, 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 stinger hooks tend to follow. And uh, when you have a fish fighting, and you're trying to land it and get the hook out, that can be dangerous. So, no, I, I don't like two hooks on any of my streamers at all, trout or otherwise. That's just me. Some people like them. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions before we, uh, before we sign off? Uh, we're not going to tie next Monday. I'm going to be out of the country. And we're not going to tie the following Monday either because I'll still be gone. Um, but um, we will we'll start tying again. I think I, only have, I think I only have one week in February when we're tying because then we've got uh, President's Day holiday. Um, so... Uh, watch uh watch youtube or facebook for announcements uh the next time we tie so it'll be a few weeks before we before we tie again um and we don't know when the next flagler tie off is it'll be in march sometime but tim's tim's traveling a lot in february and so am i so we weren't able to get together so sorry about that as much as we like to have our tie offs we we couldn't uh, 
couldn't arrange them. Any other questions? No. I better go tend to that puppy. He probably needs to go out. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for uh, sitting in today and hopefully tying along. If you tie along, I hope your fly looks good. And don't forget, your first one isn't going to look as good as your third or fourth. So um, just, just, just keep cranking them out. And, um, you know, your first one's never going to look that great. If you tie it along today, uh, your next one's going to be much better. So um, have fun with it. And I um, hope you catch some nice fish on this fly. <laughs>